Welcome, and thanks for joining me for part two of this special episode on motherhood and the blessings of big families. During our last episode, we met the women with Speaking of Motherhood, a group that travels across the country to share their testimonies of family and motherhood. They're comprised of Jen Giroux, mother of nine children, Darla Wainscott, mother of three, Mary Ann D. St. Aubin, mother of four, and Christina Fiore, another mother of nine. We also met Nancy Findlay, another Speaking of Motherhood member, and her husband Mark, who's raising 11 beautiful children. Their stories continue today as we hear about the blessings and challenges that come with having a large family. And we'll hear from the Findlay brood themselves about what it's like having so many siblings. Stay with us. The women with Speaking of Motherhood work to spread a counter-cultural message when it comes to family and motherhood. They see the pressures put on women to stick to the status quo of only having two children, but they encourage women to forge their own path when it comes to family. That's really a big part of my story in t talking to younger women, explaining them, of course, what I've seen as a nurse, which is that the mentality is only to have one or two children, um, but also explaining the wonderful and um, boundless blessings there are in having the many children and, and providing best friends to the children for each other. Christina is my poster mom for big families. <laughs> All the girls want to look like Christina. Yes, you can have children and look like that. But one really important element that I like to tell about Christina is she has had eight C-sections. In a world where doctors are closing the window of opportunity for women to have children, meaning they're telling young girls, don't have children yet, go on all these contraceptives, you're not ready, but don't have them after age 35. And by the way, you have a C-section, no more than two. Christina has had eight C-sections, which is a wonderful witness to girls and young women and women that are married facing these decisions to know it is possible. Would you say that society tells you you should only have two and be happy with that? Yeah, I think there's a message out there. And I also think, I had one of my daughters is a nurse in labor and delivery, and when she was doing her clinicals, she came home and said, Mom, I can't believe how many of these women go in, and especially if they've had their third child. There is a pressure for these women to have their tubes tied. And I know I experienced that too after I had my second child. Um, a lot of pressure um, from, from doctors. Well, the message is permeated in society. If you watch a TV ad, there's two children in the ad. Mm -hmm. Very seldom is there more than that. So I guess we're all unaware of the message that we're hit with on a daily basis. Very few shows portray large families, you know? They're kind of, you know, this oddity. Why would anybody have 20 children? Or, I, you know, I don't see a lot in the media of just where it's a joyful, um, vocation. It's a joyful choice to have 11. A big message we try to get across is the fact that we can't control everything. And we live in a world where this generation upcoming wants to control the day they get pregnant, the day they're induced, the day they get home, at, you know, the, the moment that their baby has everything they want. They want to control it all. And what we try and urge is for them to have unconditional, we surrender their control and have unconditional faith and, you know, and don't try and control it all. In a moment, we'll hear from the women about the specific blessings that come with a large family. Look around you. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. This Emmy Award-winning show tackles challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, and adoption, and shows every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. Being open to having a large family may seem daunting, but Christina, Jen, Nancy, and Mark are convinced the blessings certainly outweigh any hardships. The benefits a large family provides for the children, parents, and even the community are immeasurable. Well, life is certainly lively. I mean, we're hearing it as we're talking. <laughs> We've experienced it with the crew here prior to filming. 
Are there days when it just seems overwhelming? 11 kids? Yeah, well, like I tell most people, they're not all two. I mean, there are a lot and there are moments when it's chaotic and, but there's also great joy, great joy. And you know, every, anybody who's a parent knows that there's joy in the fact of that child. Well, we get to multiply that joy. It's, it's been great. I mean, I, we look at each other and think, oh, we've been married 27 years now. And where did the time go? You know, <laughs> I mean, fast, yeah, it? and it's, and it's been full. And you know, when we die, we'll be happy. We'll have had a full life. You know, we might not travel like some other people and we might not have a lot of other stuff. But I always say it's the kids that I get to take to heaven with me. Tell me what the greatest thing about having a large family is. The kids having each other. Yeah, the brothers and sisters, learning how to share, learning how to have patience. I would just, they, they learn a lot of life's lessons that, I mean, that are gonna be very valuable for them later. And just, oh my goodness, when, now that my boys are older and they all come home from college and. You know, it's just so neat to just, you know, have all that love and, around me. The activity and the laughter are two of the greatest things in the house. And, I, you know, sometimes I'll just sit and listen in the other room. Now, sometimes it's the opposite. You know, they're in there killing each other, screaming, wrestling, you know, all that. But overwhelmingly, when you have that many kids together, it's an automatic board game, it's an automatic wiffle ball game, it's an automatic basketball game. And on top of that, it's just the personalities that interact and the humor, you know, the one-upsmen and all that that goes on. It draws other people to your house as well because so many times, um, you know, they their friends want to be there if there's a lot of the activity, you know. Mark and Nancy certainly run a busy household with 11 children, nine of whom still live at home. Their ages range from three years old to 26, and there's even two grandchildren. Sarah, the second oldest, is married with one daughter, Joy, and another baby on the way. I had the opportunity to sit down with 10 of the Findlay kids to hear all about growing up with lots of siblings. What's it like being part of such a large family? Oh, it just seems really normal to me, so <laughs> um, there's never a dull moment, that's for sure. <laughs> Is it a quiet household? No, definitely not. <laughs> it's really fun, because you always have people to play with and talk to. And... Ruthie, do you like the big family you have? What do you like best? Mommy. Mommy, huh? Nobody's better than mommy, huh? What kind of games do you play with your brothers and sisters? Puzzles. Is it, is it a pain having so many sisters? No. No? It's not. No. Not at all. You like that? Yeah. Yeah. Do you have to scream the guys that want to date your sisters? Mm, yeah. Sometimes? I'm going to have to. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Somebody's got to be the big brother, have not they? Rose, what's your favorite part about being part of this big family? Brothers and sisters go on the trampoline with me. Oh, is that fun? Bounce around? Do they make sure you don't fall off? It's part of growing up. <laughs> There's a lot of stuff happening all at once. A lot of noise, but I don't know what it would be like without it. You're never alone. Um, well, um, that can sometimes be a burden, but I. It's really great, I think. There's all this, always support, always someone to lean on. Oh, what do your friends think when you tell them you're one of 11 kids? Um, they are shocked at first, and then they just like seem to always have questions when they come over. Sometimes just, how do you do it? I guess, how do you handle it? Like, because it's normally noisy, and but I mean, I get used to it and I like it. They seem to think 11 as, oh, 11 little kids running around the house at one time. I mean, some are older, they're all grown up, they have their own families now. And it's not all 11 at the house at once. I think they were always a little bit surprised, you know, like how fun it was to come over here. 
because I think their initial reaction is always like, what? You know, but then when they come over here, they'd always say, you know, it's so fun. You guys are always doing something and you're always doing something together. When we return, we'll hear about some of the challenges of providing for a large family. Whether you're a student needing answers, a parent needing help, or a concerned citizen wanting to make a difference, Life Issues Institute has the resources you need to put your values into action. Life Issues Institute is an international educational organization committed to protecting innocent human life. Life Issues Institute knows what it takes. That's why millions throughout the world turn here for help. Life Issues Institute has authored more pro-life publications than any other entity in the world, and its materials are printed in over 30 languages. Radio broadcasts, newsletters, and a website filled to the brim with the answers you're looking for are just a click away. Go to FacingLife.tv and click on the link to Life Issues Institute to find out more about how you can change the heart of a nation. While the women with the group Speaking of Motherhood are quick to point out the blessings that come from having a big family, they're also realistic about sharing the challenges as well. From doing load after load of laundry to the cost of feeding growing kids, taking care of a large brood is no easy task. The negatives can be just not being able to spend as much time with each one of them, I would say. I just want them to all feel so special, as special that I, through my eyes, that I, as I see them. And, um, and sometimes I feel like they, you know, they, they all want you. You know, they just all want mom or they want dad. And I would say that, and, and just, it is hard. Just, you know, I mean, you have a lot of kids and there's a lot, you know, you better be a good cook and love to cook because they love to eat, and, you know, so. A lot of work. A lot of work. A lot of work. A lot of laundry, and you know, there's it's, it's tough. It's like I said before, it's the hardest job I think. There's never enough time for what you want to do. I mean, every night I find myself going to bed thinking, oh, I didn't get to talk to this one if they're out of town, or I needed to do this. You know, the mother guilt that you feel. And um, I tell my kids on my tombstone, I want them to say, now she has all the time she needs because it's very hard to try to be all things to everything that they want you to be and the lack of sleep i don't i'm not gonna, I'm not gonna lie you know it seems like someone needs you from six in the morning until sometimes two in the morning you know depending and many times throughout the night it costs a lot of money <laughs> you know i mean it's just the reality i spend a lot of money at sam's club and all of these and all the and groceries um so that you know that's hard I mean, we drive old cars, and we just fix the old cars, and we don't ever, you know, Mark can never be, you know, have a red hot rod or anything, you know, <laughs> he doesn't get to have that. And, you know, I don't get my nails done, I, you know, but that's all, you know, if another soul get my nails done. I don't know, I think I'm gonna go, <laughs> I mean, really, that's what it comes down to, what's, what's the most important thing? What are some of the things you don't like about having a big family, Joan? Um, sometimes you just never get like alone time where you can just kind of like have quiet time and just like read a book or something. You never get really that chance very often. But you know, growing up, especially with like older brothers, there was definitely times where you just wanted them to stop teasing you and stop bugging you and stop poking you and stop, you know, all those things. Joe, are there any downsides? The downsides you? would be, like, if I would want to watch a game on Sunday and the TV is being, being used. Yeah, it's a big That's downside. probably worse than the bathroom, isn't it? <laughs> yes. Yeah. Especially when it's My Little Pony and... Oh, and the Bengals are playing. Or do the Bengals come at the top of the list? They come at the top. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. <laughs> We're very honest, try to be very honest with young moms and say, you know, I always say, they're at the most tired stage right now. They're all under seven, hang in there, you know, and, um, and knowing that they're going to be there for you, 
later on, you know. It, it, there are negatives, you know. Um, the negatives are minimal in compared to the, the gifts that outweigh that. What impact has having a large family been on your marriage? Definitely stretched us um, as a couple, you know, being open to more children and um, we don't have the resources to do certain things. So we need to work together or be more creative on making things work. So from that standpoint, I, you know, I think it stretched us and I feel that we're better for it now as a couple. There's some struggles, yeah. It's definitely um, because you don't have a lot of time for your husband. Yeah, and just not being able to have that quality time. And um, How do you deal with that? Um, well, I, you know, I would say you just, you have to carve that time out and, and just, you know, for each other. And that's what we did over the years. That those things are really important, I would say, that when you have a big family, you really have to um, try to put each other first um, and, you know, God and then each other because you, you um, otherwise you lose sight of, of, the, of the marriage and, you know, it can hurt that. Nancy, Christina, Darla, Jen, and Marianne love traveling and sharing their stories of motherhood and family to women across the country. They've seen a need for women to hear a counter-cultural message when it comes to valuing family and life. The response they've received has been overwhelming and is a true testament to the power of their stories. We were all mobbed almost. Tears, people, oh my God. I was shocked. I was totally shocked. And I said, Jen, you're right. People need to hear about it. They must not know. You know, I guess I was blessed to have a mom who loved being a mom and, you know, and, and family life. So that was, you know, I guess it's just so second nature to me that it never dawned on me that people needed to hear that it's okay to have another baby, you know? Be open to life. It's, we plant the seeds and we witness to the truth, but then we, you know, we just kind of ask God to open the doors where He wants us to go. But we really, most of the time, we don't know if anybody takes to what we said <laughs> to heart, you know? But um, and a revealing thing to me is that a, a major a survey was done about five years ago, and Ivy League women were as a majority saying they wanted to be stay-at-home moms by the time they were 30. We would like to take credit for that, but we haven't been to that many colleges. So that tells you that the heart of a woman is truly unchanged from what it was 50 and 100 years ago. And that is the de desire to have children and to love children. Coming up, large families may bring bountiful blessings, but are they for everyone? Look around you. Every day, heroes abound in our country. We're surrounded by people who courageously face difficult obstacles life has thrown in their paths. Tune in each week to meet people who show there are positive, godly solutions to tough, critical situations. We'll tackle challenging life issues such as abortion, stem cell research, adoption, and abstinence, and show that every human life is valuable and precious. Join us for inspiring stories of people facing life head on. The wonderful women with Speaking of Motherhood understand while they desire large families, it may not be the best option for all couples. Their message is for people to realize the blessings of motherhood and life and to simply be open to God's plan for you and your family. Do you think of big families for everyone? I don't think so. Not everyone is called to have a big family, but like I think that like Christina and, and Jen with their large families, they were open to to accept the gifts that God gave them. And the, and the one lesson I learned with my third daughter, when I was deciding no more children, that's all I can handle, he showed me that his plan for me when I, after my third daughter was born, she, I didn't choose her, God chose to give her to us. And I, he gave me, he knew that we needed her in the family. He knew what a gift she would be. And I guess that's what we're trying to say. You have no idea what gift God wants to give you and how awesome this child will be in your life. I think we're looking at fertility commercially. We're looking at having children 
commercially? Does it fit our lifestyle? Does it fit the fact that I want to be an attorney or if I want to be whatever it is that I want to be? That's not really. We have the wrong perspective. If we get the right perspective and we prayerfully ask God for what is right for our life, He's not going to steer us wrong. I mean, we're all living examples of the beauty that, you know, motherhood has bestowed on us. I, it's definitely not for everyone. Yeah, so we've been blessed with 11, but I think it's challenged me to not judge those who may have one or two, that there's reasons for that, or I don't know their story, that they yes. might not have been, you know, and so I don't even want to go there. I just, you know, that's what God's called them to, and this is what God's called us to. Andrew, can you imagine being an only child or having like one or two brothers and sisters? Mm, I think it would be horrible, like there wouldn't be anybody to play with, like always. Like, pe like if you only like one or two. You know, especially when Joy was really small, I would hold her and just think, what if she was the only one, you know? And I don't know, I'm so excited for her that she's gonna have a little brother and sister. I think to be able to give that same positive feelings towards a sibling that I've had, and she can see how we all interact with each other, and hopefully they'll learn to love each other too. <laughs> so. What advice would you have to couples